Hello and welcome back to my channel. So the other day I was walking around my house and looking at various things and I was like, that's annoying, that needs to be fixed, Ooh, that's a problem. And then I realized these are probably common problems a lot of people are dealing with in their homes. So I decided to make a video on it. And here we are today. Really quickly before jumping into it, I am picking my two $500 Amazon gift card winners tomorrow. All you have to do to be entered is be following me on my new Facebook page. I will have the link to that down in the description box. And I'm just gonna pick two people at random. We're gonna start this video with my personal number one most annoying thing I've been noticing around my house. and that is almost every picture that is hung up in my house is crooked and I'm like where did I go so so wrong why are all my pictures crooked I straighten them the next day they're crooked again I got to researching and I figured out some tips and tricks and things to fix the problem first and foremost if you are hanging your pictures on a wire having only one nail is going to make it more likely to get crooked so if you could put two nails in to hang from the wire it's going to help it stay more straight second make sure that wire is only as long as it needs to be if there's any excess slack the pictures are going to go flipping and flopping and now is the real hack this kind of blew my mind because i've never heard of this in my entire life okay there are these they're picture bumpers so they're little clear sticky tabs that you stick on the bottom corner of either side of your picture. And what this does is it just helps lay it perfectly in place and prevent it from slipping and sliding. Such an easy, cost-effective solution. And let me tell you, it's just been a few days and these suckers work. My pictures, they're all straight and I'm a happy camper. And just to make sure your pictures are perfectly straight, there is a leveling app on the iPhone. So you can just you know, hold that up and make sure it's perfectly straight, set it in place, and you are golden. You're good to go. No more annoying crooked pictures. Next annoying home problem that has been slowly driving me insane. It is this. Slamming cabinets. I don't know what it is. Between having a toddler and a husband, these cabinets are banging all day long. And guess what? Those same little clear bumpers work for your cabinets too. You just stick them on the corner of your cabinets and then you close them and it will drown out the sound significantly. It's gonna go from a bang to a whisper. Another option here, you can get the soft close cabinet hinges. The only issue there is that you will have to replace all the hinges on your cabinets. Maybe I'll hire someone to do it at some point. So in the meantime, this is a easy cost-effective solution and it works. This one might seem random, but if you know, you know. That is my fake plants around my house are looking really fake. And the Ted giveaway is the pot, okay? You look right down and boom, it's a plastic plant in a pot. So I found this little hack, I think I saw it on Instagram randomly, and it's so good, so easy. Most of the fake trees come in a little small pot. Get a bigger pot to put that smaller pot into. You can get them at Target, Home Goods, you know, just a nicer, bigger pot. That's gonna go a long way. Then what you wanna do is get a piece of cardboard and you want to cut out a circle that will fit in that bigger pot and then make a cutout in the middle of the circle to fit the tree trunk. So you can wrap that around the tree trunk and it fits perfectly in the pot. Get your glue, put glue all on that cardboard and cover it in real dirt. So now it looks like you have a real potted plant that's potted in dirt and not in a little sad plastic cup. And you may be wondering, Brittany, why not fill the whole thing up with dirt? Well, A, that gets heavy and B, that gets very messy, especially if you have a toddler in the house like I do. Using this method, that dirt is fully glued down and secure, so you can't get little grubby hands picking up the dirt and throwing it all around your house. What's next on my list of things that annoys me? Oh, okay, this one is becoming a problem. If you guys saw recently, we redid two of the bathrooms in our house, and I don't know what possessed me to get white grout, but the white grout is already filthy, dirty, and looks nasty. And it's annoying me. Every time I walk in the bathroom, I'm like, ooh, that looks dirty. I have three different solutions, just depending on what you have hanging around your house. The first is using a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda and just scrubbing those grout lines. That works effectively if it's a newer stain. The baking soda works as an abrasive and the hydrogen peroxide is a natural bleaching agent. So that does work on newer, more recent grout stains. The next level up 
is using soft scrub with bleach. This stuff is magical. It's gonna come in handy in our next tip I'm about to share. Using this stuff with a toothbrush on those grout lines is gonna help lift that stain. But if you are dealing with really old, really dirty grout, like those stains have been there for years, what you wanna do is get something called a grout pen. It comes a different colors paint depending on the color of your grout, in our case, white. You just paint that right on the grout line and it is as fresh as the day you installed those tiles. I personally went with a combination of first cleaning the grout and then going over those crisp lines with the grout pen and now everything looks so fresh and clean. Next, this is right up there at the top. This has been annoying me to no end, okay? We have this quartz countertop that we were told was very stain resistant, if not stain proof. Well, turns out that's not true. Ryan said he put a Chick-fil-A iced tea cup on this countertop and we got a ring of that tea stain on here. And oh my goodness, this has been a saga of the stain. I have tried so many things to lift the stain. The first little DIY trick that did work, I would say I got 75% of the stain off. I put baking soda on the stain and I got half of a fresh lemon and I scrubbed it with that lemon. Now it's at the level of a stain that only I notice it, but I still notice it just enough that it's been really bugging me. So that is where I went onto my Instagram stories and I had like a hundred people tell me this stuff right here. Apparently the soft scrub with bleach is like a miracle worker. And this is the magical touch that will remove those ring coffee stain or tea stains in this case from your countertops. The key is you wanna put it on and let it sit. I let it sit overnight and then I scrubbed it off and that was it, the stain is gone and I just feel so good now knowing that there is an easy solution. If this ever does happen again, I have my soft scrub, slippery rugs. I got this new runner rug and that sucker is slippery. And especially I'm walking around there with wet feet. I have kids running around. There is a very easy solution for this and they're called rug grippies. They have different types out there. What I have found to be the easiest solution are these corner rug grippies because they are the easiest and fastest and they work amazingly well. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you just stick one side on the underside of the rug and the other side on the floor and no more slippery rug. Next up is the classic creaky doors. I swear like every year, all the doors start going at the same time and it's like a little symphony of creaky doors around the house. And when you have kids that are sleeping and very easily awoken, you don't want the creaky door to be the thing that does you in, you know what I mean? I have a free, easy solution with something that you probably already have and that is spray oil. Canola, olive, peanut, whatever oil you're using, if it comes in a spray can, spray that right on the hinge of the door. Don't wipe it off right away. Let it like soak in, get in the grooves, and then wipe it off, and boom, your door creaks no more. Streaky mirrors, you guys. I had the biggest problem ever with cleaning my mirrors, and I thought for years that the problem was whatever cleaning solution I tried just wasn't working. I made like five different DIY cleaners, I tried a variety of natural cleaners, and then I went all the way up to Windex. No matter what I did, the mirrors were still streaky and they had little fuzzies on them. The key is actually the cloth that you're using. That is what makes the biggest difference. They make these special glass and mirror cleaning cloths. They're lint free, so you can pretty much use anything to clean your mirrors and glass and there's no streaks at all. It makes the biggest difference. It will just make your life so much easier. I've also heard the tip that you can use newspaper and that works really well. So if you do have newspapers lying around, we don't get the newspaper anymore. So that's why for us that one doesn't quite work. But if you do have newspapers, you could also use that because nobody likes a streaky linty mirror. I'm sorry. It's just not cute. Next, rusty pans and baking sheets. I don't know what it is about me and the way I cook, the way I live my life. Why are all my pans getting rusty? And the key secret product ingredient for this is called Barkeeper's Friend. What it's designed to do is restore shine to metal and remove rust or mineral deposits. So it uses something called oxalic acid, which is a natural abrasive. So it is bleach free and non-toxic, which I like about it, especially if you're cleaning things that you were then eating out of. Really put some elbow grease in there and you can rub the stains out. So I did this on our pots and pans and our baking sheets. You could do this on your oven grates or anywhere in your house where you have stains or mineral deposits on metal. So not only is this product the barkeeper's friend, it's also Brittany's friend. I love to make new friends. Also, you know what, soft scrub, 
you're my friend too. This last one for today, cause I'm really honestly just getting started, is the laundry detergent container. Like, I don't know what it is. That thing is always leaking and dripping and it's slimy and it just annoys me. It's annoyed me for years. So I have two different solutions. The first is my favorite because it's the simplest, okay? I found this Method Laundry Concentrate and it comes in the best container because it's this little pump. You just do a few little squirts and you're golden. There is no drippage, no spilling, and it's more environmentally friendly because you can just refill it and continue to use that same container. That's what I've done. But it's the dispenser that is key because there is no leaking, no spills. Now, maybe you're someone who buys your detergent in bulk and you like using you know, the big dispenser container. So what you do here, you fill up the cap with your laundry detergent, just drop that cap with the laundry detergent inside in your wash. Run it with your clothes and then once your cycle is done, you will have a nice clean cap that you can then just put back on and continue to use the next time around. I know this sounds weird, but it does work. Okay, so that is going to be it for this week's video, for this week's list of things that are annoying me around the house. I would love to make this a series, so I wanna know from you guys. Let me know in the comments. What is something in your home that annoys you that you would like me to solve? Don't forget to use my link in the description box to go follow me over on my new Facebook page because again, I am picking the two $500 Amazon gift card winners tomorrow and the winners will be announced over on my Instagram stories. So check there. And with all of that said, thank you as always so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. And I got you this new heart rate monitor. You just wear it on your wrist. It's gonna track your heart rate, your stress, your sleep, all of that. Oh, sweet, thanks. Nice. Thanks, hon. Hey, hon, this heart rate monitor you got me, it keeps zapping me. I think there's something wrong with it. No, hon, it's totally normal. Just keep it on. Just whatever you do, do not take it off. It's normal.